At one point in one of your articles, you mentioned linear structure templates and, and not necessarily following that, having other... Yeah. What do you mean by linear structures and right. how do you not follow that? Okay. What I mean by linear is that the, the, the standard way you'll see temp templates and, in fact, most thematic coding schemes arranged is simply a list with sub-lists to it. So, you know, here's your top theme, two sub-themes here, three off here, they might draw it as like a tree, as, it, as, yes. it, as in a vivo or something. Yeah, sure. But it, it's basically a straightforward line. So you've got lines going down and lines going across. Mm, mm. Um, but sometimes you might want to think about connections between groups of themes and not treat them as if they are you know, a set of separate silos. Because they never are. Mm. Of course they always overlap mm. because they're your imposition on the continuous flow of somebody's experience as they account it to you. Um, so, so, and, it, and if you're, but if you, particularly if you're interested in, in kind of developing uh, some kind of model out of what you're doing or characterizing it in that sort of way, you know, doing something like a mind map can be quite an effective way of doing it. So you, you're looking for so how... A mind map on the codes themselves, you mean? So that yes. So, the so points so on the mind map are... Codes. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So you could, themes. yeah. So you could, you could develop cross, cross category links. Right. Yeah. Now, the, the 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 danger with that is it can quickly become something that that, that looks like a, a bird's nest. You know, and and I mean, one of the whole points of doing any kind of structured approach to analysis it, it is to bring more clarity to it mm -hmm. than simply you narrating your way through the impressions you got through reading it. And, and if, if the structure becomes so complex that you really can't make head nor tail of it, then it's not really doing its job. Um, and I suppose the other reason why, more often than not, I end up with something that's largely linear is in the end, most of our ways of disseminating remain linear. Uh, you know, you have to write your paper or your dissertation from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Now, I always think we could do a lot more like in, with, with online publishing. You know, why, do you, why can't you have a finding section which is hot links? And the reader chooses what order they read them in. Mm, mm. But actually, that doesn't really happen much. In the main, even online journals publish yes, conventional yes, linear yeah. accounts. Mm. And so in the end, you've got to think about in what order am I going to discuss my themes. So that's why actually having the, thinking about that when you're developing the template can be helpful because it helps you think about how you're going to communicate mm, right. the findings. It sounds like we're getting close to something else I was going to ask you about, which is the relationship between the themes or the, or the codes uh, and whether in template analysis you would be concerned, very much concerned with kind of an interrelationship between themes. So you might say, I want to look at areas where people have talked about this, this and this, and they've also talked about this or this or mentioned yeah. these things yeah. on. Is that something that you would do yeah. in template analysis? Yeah, I think quite often. And, <coughs> and one of the things that I will sometimes do is where the, where looking at those interrelationships leads to certain sort of cross-cutting themes almost, mm -hmm. then I, I, I've used this phrase integrative themes to describe a kind of set of almost like core themes, or almost a bit, if you're if you phenomenal, phenomenological background, like, like the ideas about essence or core categories in grounded theory, mm -hmm. that, that, that kind of impinge on a great deal of the data. So there was a study I was involved in on patient experiences of diabetic renal disease and uh, we were focusing on, on particular impact on people's everyday lives and their, their contact with the medical system and the healthcare system. Um, and there were a couple of things that just kept linking together all these disparate areas of coding. And one, one, one was this, this kind of f falling back on a, a stance of stoicism to present how they're dealing with things, be it how they deal with the, the, the system or how they deal with their everyday lives. Mm. And then there was another area which was all around the notion of uncertainty and, and, and having to deal with uncertainty. And it just, there was no, if, if you're gonna use it as a theme, you'd have to kind of keep having them as sub things of everything. And that was, that was not really accurate because what it was in a sense happening, I think, was that, that you know, those, those themes of uncertainty and of stoicism as, as, as the default response did permeate their experience. 
in a very thorough way, really. Mm, mm. And so, you know, the way we did that was to have those as kind of like a separate level of coding. Mm, yes, and I've yes, done, done yes. that a couple of times, where in a sense I've taken the, first, you know, the, the very linear mm. thing by thing coding, and then developed almost like a, a meta template on top of that, which pulls out things that draw together those themes. I see. Right. Almost um, side by side, yeah, two templates yeah, almost. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. And something I published this year has, has done that. It's used a, a kind of a second, not, not another level, but it, it, it was a superimposed template oh. that, that is, is much more interpretive, actually, yeah. and will tend to yeah. be much more at that interpretive and theoretical. To me, that level. sounds much more like the grounded theory approach of, of, of core themes yeah. or, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, um, what I was getting at too was, was something that perhaps has more akin, a more. Um, more in, 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 in common with either the, the um, framework analysis approach or, or the Mars and Huberman matrix approach, yeah. where you talk about two dimensions almost and looking at the relationships between one and the other. So yeah. one set of themes and another set of themes, you look at the yeah. relationships. Yeah. Do you do that in template analysis? Sometimes. I mean, I think it probably could be done more, actually. I mean, sometimes I've done that by, by having, in a sense, yes, a, a parallel set of themes that, that mm. are... Mm physically drawn as like, I mean, a big curly bracket linking yes, those yes, things and yes, showing yes. how this then yeah. links into a set of parallel yeah. themes. Yeah. Um, and and I, I, I mean, yeah, I, I, do th I do think, I mean, it's one of the things I, that, that, that does bother me is that it is easy to stick with, 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 with a rather linear and overly discrete groups of themes. Uh, and I think that's something I want to Think yes, more about yeah. in terms of how to. It struck me that that's a danger too. That. I remember reading um, um, Clive Seal has written on this, uh, doing an analysis of various published papers mm -hmm. using qualitative analysis, particularly using the software. And he found many of them were simply reporting the work as a, as a listing of themes, the major mm -hmm. themes, one, yeah. two, three, four, and that's it. Yeah. And no kind of comparative work at all being done, no, no, no other matrices or no other ideas of comparison being yeah. used. So it sounds like you, you, you suggest that yeah. there ought to be some of yeah. that in there at least. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it does depend what kind of paper you're doing. And I guess mm. so, some of the more evaluation based, very applied things, a lot of what you want to say is. A, whether because the, because the main themes, the top level themes address key real world issues, there's a lot to be said about each of those separately. Mm -hmm. But even then, it's often benefits from you stepping back from that and saying, you know, is there some kind of kind of meta level mm -hmm. of message here about what's going on in this organisation or whatever that mm -hmm. I want to mm -hmm. to flag up. 